a lot of people say, oh, I just want to sort of, they kind of, they're kind of dabbling in the idea of improving themselves. And the real way to do it is you got to write down what the fuck you want and then go after it. If you decide, I'm going to get down to bang, I'm going to do this, I'm going to run a marathon in less than five hours, I'm going to, you know, whatever the fuck it is, you got to write that shit down and go for it. Well, my workout, I schedule every Sunday. I schedule everything that I'm going to do during the week. I say, I have to do yoga two times this week. I have to lift weights three times this week. I have to run twice this week. And however I fit that in, I fit that in. But I owe those things. And you don't need two and a half hours. You can get a great workout in in 40 minutes. And that's all you need for the whole day. 100%. Yes. You know, this idea of time. Like, how much time did you put in today? Like, you could work out in a bullshit manner for two hours and not get nearly as much done as you can for a half hour hard just yeah. running. Okay. So I have to get those things in. The only exceptions are injuries and sickness. I do everything that I can to put my body and my brain in a good place so that I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my engine smooth. I'm changing my oil, I'm changing my spark plugs, I'm making sure that it's operating. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but the, yeah. I know that I've done my best to keep it working the best that it can. There's consequences that you pay to constantly seeking comfort and, and avoiding discomfort and avoiding hard work. And those consequences are you're never going to feel self-realized, you're never going to feel like you accomplished anything, you're never going to have this feeling of understanding that difficulty and struggle and, and the ability to push through that is a muscle. And you develop that muscle Correct. by doing it. And once you do, you develop a lot of self-satisfaction and you develop peace of mind and you, you understand that you can overcome obstacles. If you don't have to overcome obstacles, you never know whether or not you can. Unless you are faced with actual adversity, you don't understand how you're going to feel and how you're going to react when you overcome that adversity. Fine. Things that are difficult, when you do these difficult things, you're stressing your mind or I should say, don't even stressing your mind, exercising your mind and exercising your body's ability to manage intense situations. It's hard. It's very difficult. It's very testing. And in doing so, you, you lessen the stress of regular life. The more stressful situations that I experience, the more I understand what they are and the more I can relax. But it's also like, the ma a matter of constantly being exposed to these stressful situations where there's not a long break in between doing stand-up or a long break in between martial arts training where to, to the point where anxiety can build up and then once you get into it it's almost an it's an unusual situation instead of a, a usual one what I tell people is the best advice that I, I've ever heard it's the best advice I ever came up with is it live your life like you're the hero in your movie. And right now is when the fucking movie starts and your life is a shitbag disaster. Okay. Pretend you are, uh, right now, you are in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a fucking loser. And just decide not to be a loser anymore. Live your life like there's a documentary crew following you around and you are analyzing your own behavior. Do what you would want to do so that your kids one day would look back at it and, and, and see that documentary and look on it with pride like wow my dad was a bad motherfucker he really did what he had to do wow my mom really got her shit together i love a success story but even more than a success story i like a dude who fucks his life up and then gets it back together again story those are my favorite stories and the way to do that you gotta write shit down you gotta think that you are the hero in your own fucking movie and then you gotta sit down and you gotta write shit down write down what you need to do You have to be the hero of your own story, and you can do that. Ninety percent of it is just showing up, get there, and start working. Like you're not gonna feel perfect every day. It's gotta be those days you push through, and they're they're probably gonna be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline, I get things done. Write down everything you want to do. This is what I want you to do. 
write down what you would like to fix about your life. And then just, if you're 30 pounds overweight, you wanna lose 30 pounds, do it the right way. Go start eating vegetables, monitor your calories, write down what you eat, exercise every day, force yourself to do it. The brain is the general, the troops are the body, and you get up and you do it, and then you get to write it down. Our bodies, for whatever reason, uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. It's so illogical, because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles and in, in terms of like how you feel about life a, a lot of those are connected to discomfort like discomfort is your friend it really is like discomfort and uh, and not being happy and content with certain situations in life or certain feelings in life one of the big problems is sitting down and doing the work And he labels it like an enemy, he calls it resistance, mm -hmm. you know, and that you have to sit down and you have to overcome resistance and that the pro goes to work. And it doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter if you have kids, it doesn't matter what you, you're a pro and you go to work and that, and that just, it puts it in your head that this is what I do. You have pride in that, and then when you are in front of that keyboard, and you're you're you got you look down the count. It says put a thousand words in you, you know, yeah. and you you you're doing the work, yeah. and out of that work, gems blossom. And it's about resistance that people feel when uh, you know you should write, or you know you should paint, or whatever you should sculpt, whatever these things are that you you pursue, and that there's this thing that comes up that tries to keep you from doing that. This resistance. You're not a hero in your own eyes. You're not, you're not someone who you respect. You know, you're doing what you gotta do to get by, but ultimately, you're not respecting yourself. And I think we all have a certain amount of appreciation and respect for hero figures. You know, like, we all look at, like, the guy who never lies and always does the right thing and fucking helps everybody out, and that's the John Wayne character, you know? That's, that's the, right. the ultimate hero. And he's like, this is a battle that you will fight for the rest of your life. But the key is to fight it, not to give in. Don't give in to that resistance. To fight, Just to fight that resistance, and in doing so, every day you do so, you have won the battle for that day. And you will continue to fight that battle. And when you look at your own life and you don't stack up you're a thief you stole money from your wife's purse and you know you 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 you, you don't want to smoke cigarettes but you fucking have to you, you can't deal with the stress and smoke you devalue yourself you slowly start devaluing yourself you you look at yourself and you realize that if you were judging yourself you would judge yourself unfavorably so no matter who you you can't pretend you're the the the, the hero of your story You can be the hero of your own story that woke up today. You can be the hero of your own story that, at 40 years of age, stopped, got out of bed, and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Only by my instincts, and only by my morals, and my ideals, and my mind, and I'm going to be dead honest with myself, because I'm realizing this is not going to last forever. And I'm gonna get myself in shape and I'm gonna eat healthy. And I'm gonna do this because this is this is me now. I decide that this is me. And people have to realize that you are not your past. You are not all oh, the yeah. times you fucked up. You're not all the times you were drunk. That's not you. What you you are the person who's learned from a great deal of experience. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, 
of Ugh. you wanting to be liked by these other people. You can run into a trap and you, you, you set up a life that you didn't really want. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. You're trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed. And all that, and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them, oh my goodness. Then you're fully locked in, you can't take any chances whatsoever. And oftentimes people make the mistake of getting stuck. And it is just a tactical mistake, just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game. Just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you got stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. Because people define themselves by the past. Instead of thinking about who they are now, instead of they, they still look back at a mistake they made and don't just get past that mistake, grow and learn, but dwell on it. Think oh. it defines them. I mean, th there's definitely pitfalls in life. You're going to run into them. We all are. No, you can learn and grow if you survive. Somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just got to get up and get shit done. There's sometimes where you have to fucking pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you want to stay in bed. Having that safety net just provided him with a way to stay in bed. Kept him weak. Have an opportunity. Every time things go wrong, every time things feel terrible, you have an opportunity to learn from whatever makes you feel terrible and never allow it to happen again. Push forward. The system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. They want to set it up so that you stick around, stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem to see that issue as it comes up on the map. No, no, I think this is a right turn. To see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your, your future. And then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them. And most people get stuck in these patterns or they define themselves as a person who doesn't follow through on their ideas or a person who doesn't pursue their real interests and loves. You define yourself by that. Well, you know, I guess when well, I start it, things and I quit. No, you don't. No, you have started things and you quit. And it gives you a horrible sense of regret that's made you define yourself by that. You don't have to do that. If I look back on anything I've ever done, mistakes I've ever made, um, paths that I, you know, what, something that I put out that I didn't quite think, man, maybe I just waited three months before I released that, or maybe I should have, you know, re-edited that blog post a couple more times before I put it online, or the things that I've done have dri driven me crazy, but yelling at someone I didn't have to yell at them for, whatever. But the, the most important thing is always for all people to recognize that you're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. So you gotta regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really okay. gotta be careful. It's also directly proportionate to the amount of hardships that people face in life, their ability to face hardships. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit, and then one day something goes wrong. And then look at the people that are, have kind of taken chances and navigated their way. What did they do differently? Than you?
What insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not, that you step back and you go, you know, I just don't, I just don't want to look at myself that closely. But the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results. There's a great feeling in these overcoming these difficult things because life is never this just constant state of I'm at a nine all day. And when I'm with my wife, I hit 10. Yay. And I stay like that. That's not real. It all comes from life lessons and the lessons are learned through struggle. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that think somehow or another you're going to get to some place where you're living in silk sheets and you're getting your toes done while someone's dropping grapes into your mouth. I don't want that. I've never wanted that. That guy's not going to be happy. You have been fed this line of horseshit that you're supposed to seek comfort. And I don't think you are. I think you're supposed to seek lessons and you're supposed to seek difficult tasks and, 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 and accomplishments and through those things and through doing things that are hard to do. Because if I just think, well, tomorrow I'm just going to coast and eat Twinkies and watch TV. Oh, hello, sadness, my old friend. Hello, depression. And we can pretend that we're something other than what we really are. And we can pretend, nah, me, man, I'm just cool, just chilling, doing nothing. Little improvements, I think, are what life is all about. And I think also they're, they're a tool to feed the mind. Because I really believe the mind needs these little lessons. The mind needs these little, these little tasks. Stimulation and reward. Lack of these peaks and valleys. And this, again, this bullshit idea that we're constantly fed that you should be comfortable. Those re human reward systems are carved deeply into your DNA. And if you don't respect that, if you don't respect the mechanism of happiness and fulfillment and what you really need to do in order to feel satisfied in life, camaraderie, love, family, friendship, struggle, testing yourself, learning, all those things are imperative. They're all a giant part of being a person. improvements over things. That's why doing difficult things is good.